Give God a big hand of praise. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you. Isn't it good to be in God's house today? Let's give him praise. It's good to be with you. It's good to have our brothers and sisters virtually listening and watching. And once again, the opportunity for us to be able to share the word of God together. Amen. Let us turn, if you will, in your, uh, for those that are listening to the book of Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 8, and those who are here in the uh, sanctuary, it's right in your bulletin on page 3. Uh, we're reading from the New Living Translation of this wonderful passage of Scripture as we are watching and listening for what is going on with Paul and Silas in the second missionary journey. Uh, the Bible says in Acts 16, for those that are listening, uh, Acts 16, um, verses 6 to 8. Uh, Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. And then coming to the borders of Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went to the seaport of Troas. And I want to talk this morning, complete this conversation prayerfully that we got started on last Sunday uh, and uh, share uh, God's timing versus our timing. One of the worst four-letter words for children of God is wait. I, 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 thought, I'd, I thought I'd get you. I, thought, I, I, I just wanted to make sure you were awake. That, that, that's all. Let's pray. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for everything and everyone who's been involved in this service this morning. We pray a blessing now. We really do, Lord, and pray that... As we share in the word today that there is a reminder for every one of us that your word is for every one of us. Now keep us, guide us, strengthen us in every way. And may all that we do be to your glory. As we the hearers, we the word, we the messengers. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Please give God a big hand of praise as you take your seat. My friends, as I shared the beginning of this conversation on last week, I was saying to you that there are times when we want to do things that uh, are not in the will or interest of God. Do I have a witness here? Uh, in fact, what we know is that this passage of Scripture is about Paul's second missionary journey. But can I uh, just sort of seep into your life for a moment? We are all on a journey. Come on, somebody. We are all on a journey. As a matter of fact, we are not only on a journey, in our mind we know where we're going. But, but I, need, I need somebody to understand that we don't always know where we're going. Do I have a witness here this morning? Uh, on the way to church this morning, and it's not like I haven't been watching the reader boards all week long talking about the fact that the 84 was going to be closed from midnight until noonish today, but me and my pitiful self was going right on up 205, ready for the 84, and it was closed. You see, I was on a journey. Do I have a witness here? And what I found out is it was going to take me a little bit longer to get to church this morning because my usual route wasn't working. And, and can I just pause for a minute and remind every one of us, no matter what journey we're on, there's a detour every now and then. 
Lord, Lord Jesus, I, I need somebody to know, I need somebody to know that it is not all about us. It is about where we're trying to head, and if it is in God's will, we'll get there. But I also need us to remember that sometimes we can't get where we're going because it's not time for us to get there. Uh, I, I, I want to talk about this for just a minute this morning because you see, uh, oftentimes we still, even in our spiritual life, we've got a microwave uh, kind of conclusion. Amen. You see, you see what the, those who came before us understood, and if you ever had the opportunity, I promise you that before there were gas stoves, there were pot belly wooden stoves. Come, come on, somebody. And, and I know this may mess up some folks in here, but I, I came to tell you that I learned how to wait on the, the meal because it was on the pot belly stove. What, what does that mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked. It meant that you had to feed the stove with wood, and, uh, Lord, and, 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 and there were cast iron skillets, come on now, that, that got things ready. And in fact, everything was not ready at once. And what we had to do is learn how to wait on the meal. I, I know, I've got a witness somewhere here today. We had to wait on the meal. I don't care how good it smelled, and, and, and let, me, let me just say, it smelled good. You know, good, good cooking smells good. Do, do I have a witness here? Uh, this was long before the chart house, long before claim jumper, long before, do, do I have, I, I, listen, I'm going to come to your restaurant in a minute if y'all don't say anything. The fact of the matter is, we learned how to wait and appreciate what we got when we got it. Amen? Paul is on a journey, he and Silas, and in fact, they run into a dude by the name of Timothy. Do we have a witness here? This is the record now. And they run into Timothy, whose mother and grandmother were known to be God-fearing women, and he indeed was a God-fearing man. And in ministry, it is nice to have some help from people who literally want to do their best to help you get where you're going on your journey. Do I have a witness here? Because sometimes this journey stuff gets hard. Sometimes when you're trying to get things done, they don't get done so easily. I was in a meeting the other day. We all had come together. I thought certain things had been taken care of and stuff like that. And somebody just threw a major wrench in the middle of the whole thing. And therefore, now we've got to start off. It wasn't the church, so I want to be real clear. It was, it was church connected, but it wasn't this church. Do I have a witness here? The fact of the matter is that's the case. In other words, the journey that every one of us are on is a journey that we don't have full control over. And in fact, what we need to remember is that there's a captain of our ship by the name of Jesus Christ, and he knows what's best for us. Do I have a witness here? He knows what's best for us. And indeed, there are times when we get frustrated when things don't come together as quickly as we think they should. That's what I mean about the microwave, microwave spirituality that sometimes we have. Just put it in there, and in 30 seconds, it ought to be all right. Do I have a witness here? But I came to tell you that it doesn't always work that way. I promise you that at this point, I know in my life, and I believe in many of your lives, we are stronger spiritually than we have ever been. But, but there are times when our spirituality was so fragile that we could get tipped over in a minute. Uh, uh, Y'all can get quiet on me all you want to. I know what I'm talking about. The fact of the matter is we could go to church and have ourselves a good time, a wonderful time, in fact, a high time in spirit, and you get out the door of the church and somebody says something wrong and you're ready to cuss them out. Do, do, do I have a witness here? 
But you know, after a while, you get to the place that if you've got a high mountain experience at church or a high mountain experience in Bible study or in Sunday school, that you get to the place that folks can say what they want to say. It's not going to bother you because they don't have any power over you. The power that is over you is the power of Jesus Christ. I, I'm going somewhere. We're on a journey, y'all. We're on a journey, and in this life, there means that there will be places that we want to go at times that we want to go, and the Spirit of God reminds us that that is not where we need to be going right now. If you look at the text, the text will tell you that Paul didn't start out going to Troas. That wasn't even on his mind, but the other places were on his mind. And as Paul prepared himself to go these other places, Places, whether it was Lystra and Derby and um, Perigia and all of these places, Mysia, I came to tell you that he was ready to go. But the fact is, he was also ready to go other places, and the Spirit of God said no. And I don't know about you, but I've had those experiences where I realized that this isn't where I need to go. Because you see, it was my timing and not God's timing. Do I have a witness somewhere? The journey requires every one of us to understand that God's always got a destination for every one of us. And in fact, he will get us to that destination, but I have come to learn in my life that every experience that he closes the door on is an experience that I need that door closed at that moment because you see the good news about God is that he closes doors and he opens doors. And you see, when he closes a door, there is a reason why he closes it. You see, uh, indeed, the, the, the deal is that every one of us needs to understand that we are not in control in the first place. This is why, this is why every time I've seen that bumper sticker that said, God is the co-pilot, doesn't know what they're talking about. I don't know about your life. I do know about my own. He is not the co-pilot. He is the pilot, and I'm the passenger as he's doing what it is that he's going to do. Paul was trying to get there, but what he didn't realize is that God had a place for him to go. And in fact, God had already decided that Troas was one of those places. And in fact, what he knew is for him to get ready for Troas, he had to deal with some other experiences. Do I have a witness here? What I know is I, no matter how good you are at the job you either are in or the job that you're retired from or the subject matter in school, no matter what it is, you didn't start out being that good. Do I have a witness here? I, 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 you, you, you know, we, we heard Sister Francine sing today, but I've got to believe at some point uh, when she was learning how to sing, it might not have sounded as good as it did today, but I promise you that all you got to do is have some life experiences, and then you begin to sing in a far different way. You preach in a far different way. You play the organ or whatever instrument a far different way because... You've had some experiences on your journey that aren't just about what the book says. It's about your spirit and about your heart. Do I have a witness here somewhere? Hallelujah. That's why the best cooks, y'all ready for this? The best cooks are dump cooks. What does that mean, preacher? They're not following a, a recipe they have figured out over time. Do I have a witness here? They have figured out over time how to put it together. And you see, that's why some of us who wanted to do it the way grandma, big mama, or mom did it, uh, we can't do it. It doesn't come out the same way because there's something extra that they knew how to put in the ingredient that they didn't tell us about or was in the recipe, but it didn't come out the same way. Well, I came to tell you that every experience will get you to Troas at some point. 
the reality, the reality of what Paul was dealing with, the reality of what we deal with on our journey is that God knows what's best for every one of us. No matter how much we think we know, I want you to know that God knows more. Do I have a witness here? And by the way, he's making the way for us, you see, because you see, Paul couldn't be good at Troas without dealing with some of the other stops along the way. Some of us would not be the drivers we are without the tickets we got. I knew that was a curveball. I, I knew y'all weren't y'all weren't ready for that. That's that, that but but every one of us when we start out, we are not the greatest driver. We bump stuff, we get tickets, we deal with stuff, but over time we get it together. A amen belongs right there. What's happening is that we're on a journey. Some of us were not all that great in relationship. But it took us bumping our head a little bit. Do I have a witness? Before we got it together and did better. Do I have a witness? Uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, in relationship, in friendship, some of us don't have the friends that we used to have because we have had experiences that have caused us to understand this is not the friendship I want, the friendship I need. I want to be the kind of friend that someone can depend on, but I have to remember that to be able to do that, i got to go to Lystra sometimes. I've got to go to Derby sometimes. I've got to go to Perigia sometimes. And God is getting me ready for a friendship that is as good as the friendship in Troas. I'm on my way to Troas today. No matter. But before I get there, there's some detours I've got to have. There's some emergency room situations I've got to have. There's some brokenness that I've got to deal with. And there are some issues that i got to get up from because I have created them or somebody created them for me. But this is a journey, and I'm not going to stop until I get to throw ass because that's where God is sending me. God is sending us. God knows what he's doing. That relationship didn't work out. It's all right. It's all right. You're on a journey. Figure out what it is that didn't work out and straighten it out with the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Straighten it out with the person. If they will hear, if they will listen, and if they don't, I want you to just keep on stepping anyway. I was talking with a pastor last night, and he was telling me what's going on right now and the reason why he can't come to our prayer time on Saturday night. Time didn't allow me, but this week I'm going to get a chance to tell him that when you stay away from prayer time, there's only one person that enjoys that, and that's the enemy of God. Because you see, if God could silence, if, if, uh, if the enemy could silence us, he would be mighty happy. Do I have a witness? The enemy's trying to stop church service every 
every Sunday morning, but I'm so glad that we get up in the morning and he tries to stop us and we remind him, I've got to get to Kroos today. set me all week have done nothing but strengthen my resolve because I know that God has a place for me on this journey sometimes it's Derby sometimes it's Lystra sometimes it's Perigia sometimes it's Mysia but what I do know is that ultimately he tried to get me to Troas and for me to get to Troas I've got to go through some other stuff do I have a witness here and while it may be hard while it may be so difficult that I feel like giving up sometime I came to tell you that's the reason folks go to choir rehearsal praise team rehearsal exercise rehearsal because we know on the other end of this journey that God has got something great for us and we want to be prepared to receive it do I have a witness here and I promise you talking to a young college student on yesterday about the future of a master's program and a PhD program. And the main point I was making is don't let anything get in your way because there's a lot of things that will get in your way. But you listen to the voice of God. I want you to keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Because in God's timing, everything is going to be all right. Do I have a witness here? In God's timing, everything is going to be all right. He's going to set the table. He's going to create the experiences. And our job, even when it's hard, is to quit relying on self and learn how to depend on him and he will get you through this is my last point the good news about God y'all ready for this the good news about God is if indeed you're on life's journey and man says uh, that 84 is closed I came to tell you that we've got a God that's bigger than 84 being closed because he's always got uh, another path uh, for you and me to go to I came to tell you today uh, he said uh, I want you to go to Troas uh, and I want you to go this way don't worry about the 84 because I've already made another route for you. Take that route. You're still going to be on time. Everything is still going to work out. Go on. Go on. Let's stand all around the house. Let's stand all around the house and give God some praise. Let's stand all around the house and give God some praise. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise.